we are going to make unpapered towels or just kitchen towels or rags. Whatever you call them, they're a good way to go zero waste and stop using paper towels in your kitchen. Before we get started, let's talk about the different fabrics that you can use. I have some terry, French terry cloth, but you could also use an old towel. I have a t-shirt that I'm gonna use for no sew, but you could use any knit. I have knit yardage here. You could also use old sheets because who uses a flat sheet anyways? PJ pants or an old flannel shirt, just cut it up if it's at the end of its life cycle. When you're picking fabric for the no sew version, you'll wanna do a knit, something that doesn't fray when you flick it. So these two are knit. This one is a woven so you can see it's starting to fray just from me like pulling on the edge a little bit. For the no sew version it's super easy. You're just going to cut a square out of your fabric in about the size that you want. Um, I cut it out uh, 12 by 12 because I have a 12 inch ruler. Easy peasy. If you want like authentic paper towel size use 12 by 13 as your kind of guide. I'm not super concerned about these towels being all the same size so I'm basically just going to cut underneath the armpit and then cut this t-shirt into equal rag size pieces. Make sure they're sort of even Stevens and then I'm just going to cut up this fold here. I should probably cut this seam out too. I may cut some of them smaller so they're, nah, I think this is a good size. I like this size. I'm going to cut my fabric out. I've got my ruler here. It's kind of hard to tell what the straight of grain is because this is a knit. I think I'm gonna flip it over and I've got stronger ridges on the right side of the fabric. So I'm gonna use the right side of the fabric to help me cut this out. If you're confused about straight of grain, when I say that, let me know in the comments. So I'm just using the lines on the fabric to help guide me. Mark your square 14 by 13 and then when we finish sewing it, it's going to be 13 by 12. I recommend you use something lighter colored when you're marking your stuff just because I want you guys to see this on the screen. So I'm using Sharpie. So here's this line. I'm going to do 13 this way. I like the ridge side of the French Terry. It has lots of little loops. Um, I feel like that's a better scrubbing surface. So I'm going to put my fabric with the ridges touching the cats so right sides are kissing. <laughs> That's my little trick to remembering how to put things together to sew. Once that's done, I'm going to go ahead and pin so I have no regrets and then sew this all together. I am sewing a knit to a woven, so I think this may be a little tricky. I'm going to pin it really well and go slow. If you're an advanced sewist, then um, for sure put your walking foot on. I don't have a walking foot. I just have a regular foot. I feel like I am doing a lot of pinning for this, but I'd rather be safe than sorry. We'll see how it behaves underneath the presser foot. I am going to leave a section open so I can turn this inside out. When you fully line something like this, the fancy term is bag it out. So I am going to leave the point between these two pins open so I can bag this out. I took my old sewing machine to my mom's house. Oh, bess. Old bus is out to pasture. So I have this new sewing machine. I like it so far. We're gonna do a half inch seam allowance. That's what I cut this at. I'm gonna get it lined up. Oh, it's a little bit, it's a little bit wobbly. My other green pin is here. I'm gonna leave this gap open. I'm going to do a lot of turn and pivoting for this. As I get close to this corner, what I'm gonna do, take a few stitches and then I might hand lock it. So I'm perfectly in that corner. What I'm gonna do is I'm gonna put the needle into the fabric. I'm gonna lift my presser foot. Whoa, too much. I need to take a few more stitches. Nice thing about leaving the needle in is you can totally do that. Now it seems more, yes, more, more, more better. <laughs> And these aren't a garment. You're not going to wear them. So they don't necessarily need to be like pristine. Keep going all the way around and leave that little space open. And of course my best turn and pivot was when the camera was off. <laughs> my pride hurts. What we're going to do to eliminate bulk is grade the seam. Well, how do you do that? I'm going to cut a triangle. I don't want to cut too close to that stitching. I don't want it to pop through when I turn it inside out. And then I'm gonna cut it down at an angle here, just because there's so much going on in this corner and it's so tiny. I'm gonna cut it down so you've got this little 
angle here and then these are all angled away. I'm gonna do that on all the corners and then I'll flip it inside out. I've got all my corners graded. I'm going to now do a magic trick. I'm going to pull my whole unpepper towel out through this hole. What I'm gonna do is I'm gonna top stitch this. I'm gonna go around the edges and give it a nice edge. Ugh. Hold on, I can't think and do this at the same time. So we still have this little section that's open. What I'm gonna do is I'm gonna top stitch this shut, but then I might as well go all the way around and top stitch all of these edges. I also saw on Crafty Gemini, she sewed an X in the middle of the unpaper towel just to kind of keep it all together so it didn't like get weird in the washing machine. I think I'm gonna do that too. I'm just gonna use the presser foot as a guide to sew this shut. If you have strong feelings about it, you can totally press yours uh, before you sew it, but I, it's a towel, I'm not gonna press mine. You're totally gonna get good at turn and pivot. I'm burying my needle in the corner and I'm gonna go crisscrossy to make an X. Now I'm gonna do the second line to complete the X. Boop -a -boop. Now let's do the single layer unpaper towel slash kitchen towel slash kitchen rag. First things first, let's go press a quarter inch hem into this. I have this set to a quarter and that's super super tiny so if you feel like Oh gosh, you feel like you're wrestling with it. You don't like this at all. Set it to a half inch. You you don't don't struggle. In the corners you're gonna want to fold it like this, so you can hide your ends. A little mitered corner there for you, and then you can pop that up a quarter inch. You may notice that I only did one turn at the iron. I like to do the second turn on the sewing machine. Let me show you how that looks. It's not as scary as you think, but it does take some practice. What you're gonna do is you're gonna take this little edge and you're gonna fold it over. I'm gonna be nice to you and we're gonna start in the middle because um, uh, uh, the corners make my brain explode. I'm folding this edge down and I'm going to stitch along the edge of the fold. I'm doing my best with this quarter, it's a little tricky. Okay, 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 I think I got it. I'm going to bury my needle and then turn and pivot. Okay, that felt like a lot of work for something that's just gonna be a kitchen rag. I know what you're asking yourself right now. How many should I make? I think a good rule of thumb is to make what you have. Dig through your stash and see how many you have. That being said, around 15 seems like a good number. That way you have some that are in your kitchen ready to go and then some in your wash. I had three before I started this DIY and they were in heavy rotation in my kitchen. I also think it's a good idea to mix up the kind that you make, although the double layer ones with the X in the middle are my favorite ones just based on how they feel right now. I have ones that are double layer of flannel and I use them a lot and I've had them for over three years and I just wash them in the washing machine with my other towels. How do you store these? I could see a whole bunch of these rolled up like in a coffee mug, like a tiny bouquet of reusable towels in your kitchen. I always just fold mine and put them in my linen cupboard, but my linen cupboard is like three steps from my kitchen. I was reading online and someone said that they wadded all theirs up and put them in that plastic bag tube that everybody had in a 1990s kitchen so they could pull them out the bottom and they wouldn't get dusty. I think that's a clever idea. If you'd like a tutorial for that, let me know. Let me know in the comments how you store yours. If you feel like you need more information or you would just like to see some other varieties, I will link those in the description. If you would like to use the roll hem technique to make like fancy napkins or a men's hanky, follow this tutorial. 